reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul reached also Derbe and Lystra, where there was a disciple named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. The brothers in Lystra and Iconium spoke highly of him, and Paul wanted him to come along with him. On account of the Jews of that region, Paul had him circumcised, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they traveled from city to city, they handed on to the people for observance the decisions reached by the apostles and presbyters in Jerusalem. Day after day, the churches grew stronger in faith and increased in number. They traveled through the Phrygian and Galatian territory because they had been prevented by the Holy Spirit from preaching the message in the province of Asia. When they came to Mycia, they tried to go on into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So they crossed through Mycia and came down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision. A Macedonian stood before him and implored him with these words, come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we sought passage to Macedonia at once, concluding that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. Verbum Domini. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Know that the Lord is God. He made us his we are. His people, the flock he tends. The Lord is good. His kindness endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. If then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Dominus Vobiscum. Lexio Sancti Vangeli Secundum Ioannem. Jesus said to his disciples, If the world hates you, Realize that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, the world will love its own. But you do not belong to the world, and I have chosen you out of the world. The world hates you. Remember the word I spoke to you. No slave is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. And they will do all these things to you on account of my name, because they do not know the one who sent me. 
Verbum Domini. The Christian life is adventurous and it's joyous. And much of this adventure and joy is met with persecutions, with some hatred. And as we go out and live the truth and speak the truths of the Lord, we are often disliked. And none of us here, at least not, nobody likes to be hated. You know, it's very difficult to suffer persecutions. But the way to embrace this is charity. This is the journey Jesus truly calls us to, is to a life of truth, but in charity. Because in living this charity, we will be able to endure the persecutions and embrace the sufferings. You know, again, nobody likes to suffer persecutions. And in being a good Christian, sometimes, you know, we are rejected by those whom we love, by the people around us, perhaps uh, those we work with, or those who live in our neighborhoods or any people we, we have to encounter may not like the fact that we're Christians. And first of all, they think, well, who are you? You know, why do you believe that? They often call us wrong or even go as far as saying we're delusional, insane, crazy for believing what we do. Our life is boring, it's miserable, but we really know it's none of those things. And in order for us to accept this teaching Jesus gives us today, he tells us right away, he says, the world has hated me. It'll hate you, it's persecuted me, it is gonna persecute you. And that's, that's, that's heavy to, to accept, to embrace, it's hard. No, no one likes being left out, ignored, disliked, hated. It's very difficult. Now, especially if, if it's somebody that we, we really care about and, and they just don't like what we're doing anymore. Well, in order for us to have a deeper understanding of this teaching, we need to look at the setting here and what Jesus is doing when he's communicating this message to us. Well, this is John chapter 15, and it's the Last Supper. And the teaching here, one of the main points Jesus is, is, is giving to the disciples is he's preaching to them on love. It's all about love, the Last Supper discourse. He says right away, well, well, even before he says this, he shows, by, he shows great love by his actions. Because what does he do? He serves the disciples. He washes their feet. It's a great action of love here, very humble. And then he tells them, he says, I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you by this will all men know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. 
So all of this is, is all rooted in love. And for us to be able to embrace the persecutions that may come our way, the rejections, we cannot receive this teaching with just like duty or obligation. There was, if, if we do it that way, then, then we become maybe a little too forceful, can even sink into rigidity. Then it, it, it's, it's more of condemnation. But again, it has to be embraced with love because this is how, this is what, this is Jesus. This is what Jesus is doing here. He comes to save the world out of love for each and every one of us. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. And he's willing to embrace and accept the persecutions, the suffering that comes his way because he loves the Father and because he loves us. And Jesus, of course, knows he's loved. John here, John the Beloved, knows he's loved, more so than, than any of the disciples. See, that, this, is, this, is what, what, this is what we need to know first. Remember, it's God who first loved us. So that, that's, what, that's what we need to take in first and foremost is God loves me and he will take care of me. He will give me the strength to endure sufferings. He will help me in the persecutions because he loves me. And then we persevere forward out of love for him. See, see and, then, and going back to, to St. John, the beloved, remember he, he says, I, I'm the beloved disciple, knowing that he's loved by God. And, uh, you know, through all, of it, all the uh, Jesus, you know, after he's, when he's on, his, uh, on the way to the cross and when he's at the cross and the crucifixion, who's the disciple there? The one who knows he's loved. The one who loves John the Beloved, of course, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and you know, Mary Magdalene's there, but John the Beloved is there. They, they know their love. They've received it. They know that they're sons and daughters of God, not just slaves and servants. Yesterday, he says, I no longer call you, in the gospel yesterday, I no longer call you slaves, but I call you friends. See, in Jesus, Jesus has given us his own life, eternal life, Yes, we are, his, we, we are the sons and daughter of the Father. But at the same time, we are the brother of Jesus. We are his friends. And he is our best friends. So persever, persevering forward in, in persecutions and sufferings, it's all about a relationship of love. And the one you truly love, you, you will do anything for. See, th this, is, this is how we overcome. And that's why, that's why Jesus tells us earlier in the Gospels, Matthew chapter 6, he says, no one can serve two masters. You either hate the one or love the other. So whoever want to come and follow me, take up your cross and follow me. But what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but yet lose his soul at the end? So we need to, need to freely and totally embrace the Lord Jesus, who, of course, always has his arms opened, loves us so much. And then he tells us in Matthew chapter 5, he says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness', righteousness sake, for, you, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And if we're in a true relationship with the Lord Jesus, and this is the true, a true love, a, a, seeking a communion with him, a, a divine union with the Lord, then we, we already, being with him, we already start to live this heaven already. It's, it's, it happens already because we're with him. He's in our heart. He's the center of our life. 
So yes, you know, this, this Christian life, we, it may, may not be the most popular one. You know, people won't like us. They, you know, we, li- we live and we, we teach the moral teachings of the Lord. And we're, we're going to be rejected for those things. And the world, Jesus says, the world hates you. But remember, he says, I have overcome the world because of his great love, his charity. And one other thing we, we need to be mindful of is that always, always we can do everything through Jesus Christ who strengthens us. Now in, in our weakness, we are made strong. See, and the more, the more we, we suffer, the more the glory of the Lord comes upon us, the more we, we rise in his life and in his love. And this is, this is part of this adventure here. This is, this is the joy here. And that's why the early disciples, the early Christians, when they were met with, with persecutions, with hatred, with rejections, they counted it as joy because it was, they, they were suffering for Jesus Christ. They were suffering like Jesus the Lord. So th- this, to come to this is again, we, is, is again a relationship with God, one of love. And it is truly an adventure because sometimes we're, we're living by faith and we, we, know, we don't know how God is going to, going to provide. It's like a blind walk, you know, it's like a, a walk with a blindfold on and we can't see in front of us. But it's, it's, it's an adventure. We don't know how, how is he, he's going to come through, but he always does. He always makes a way, especially when there's no way. There he is. It happens. And in this, and when, when we accept this, we grow in faith. We grow in love for the Lord. So my, my brothers and sisters, yes, this is a difficult life. But it's a life with Jesus and it's a life of love. And what does is, what is he promise? As St. Paul tells us, and I'll, I'll close with this. This is the part of the adventure here. Is what no eye has seen or ear has heard, what God has prepared for those who love us, for those who love him. God bless you all.